Hello, my beautiful love bugs, and welcome back. Today we are continuing our series, What's in a Name, where we look at the order names of the insects and talk about why they have that name. Because usually, if you can translate the Greek into English, then you can get some characteristics that can help you identify the insects in the field and understand their relative relationships to each other. Today we are talking about the group that includes the cicadas, the white flies, the aphids, the scale insects, and the true bugs. And I do have a video on what makes a bug true or not, so you should go check that out. It'll be on screen somewhere. The order that we're covering today is Hemiptera, and why it has this name, meaning half wing, hemi meaning half, and terra meaning wing, is do, basically due to a long wandering history of taxonomy and moving things around. Back in the day, you had Hemiptera, the half wings, and Homoptera, the same wings. Homoptera originally included all of the scale insects, all of the cicadas, all of the leaf hoppers, all of the plant hoppers. Basically, if it didn't really look like a stink bug, then it was in Homoptera. And that's because they had wings on a, the same insect, the same individual, that all four wings looked essentially the same, same winged. We later found out that this group was not monophyletic. Old Homoptera was dissolved, and that term just basically isn't used anymore, and it was dissolved into several suborders. Now, Hemiptera was kept at an order level, but all of Homoptera went into Hemiptera. So instead of them being kind of taxonomically equal, Homoptera was completely dissolved, it is now a bunch of suborders, and they were all put within Hemiptera. And that's because Hemiptera is actually defined by its mouth parts and not by its wings. Hemiptera all have this beak. It kind of looks like a proboscis, but technically isn't. The way that it evolved is independent and special to just the Hemiptera. And so the scientists discovered that all of these insects that we had originally broken apart into Homoptera and Hemiptera all had the same origin of the mouth part. So they realized that it was actually the mouth part that was important and not the wings, which is why this whole taxonomic shift happened. So now we have Hemiptera and we have several suborders below it that break off the old homopteras into different monophyletic groups. And then what used to be hemiptera is now called heteroptera. And we're going to go through all of that because that was a lot. The hemiptera is, the hemiptera was a mess. <laughs> and its nomenclature kind of suggests the mess that it was. To start off with the suborders, I'm going to talk about what used to be categorized as Homoptera first. Again, that name isn't no is no longer used, but this these next three suborders are what used to be called old homoptera. In all of these suborders, you're going to notice that they have the suffix rinka, which comes from the Greek rinkos, meaning mouth or snout. So everything is talking about either the position of the mouth or a unique feature of the mouth. The first is sternorinca. Sterno meaning chest, rinca meaning mouth or snout, and that's because the hemipteran beak's relative position to the insect makes it look like it's pushed really far back, and so that's why this group has its name. These include your aphids, your white flies, your scale insects, and these are considered to be the most basal of the hemiptera. So these are the things that are most closely related to like the thrips, then the next oldest order next to them. We haven't covered thrips yet. We will though. And when I do, I will hopefully remember to put the video somewhere around here. Next, we have a little group that is so tiny. It literally consists of like 30 species. So tiny. I didn't even learn about this in my taxonomy class. That's just how tiny this group is. Anyway, I'm here to give it to you. Anyway, these are the moss bugs. These are the coleorhynchas. And coleo meaning sheathed. So if you remember from my beetle video, their beetles are the sheathed wings. Well, these are the sh sheathed mouths. 
because they have a little plate kind of next to where the mouth part is coming out on these insects. Will you ever see one of these? No, probably not. But if you do, you should take a picture and send it to me because I would love to say that I knew someone who saw one. I thought I saw one once in Ecuador, but I didn't. Uh, it was it was just like a, a different weird bug. But anyway, moving on. This lineage is very, very old, and we consider this to be the sister group to the Heteroptera, which we'll talk about in a second, but I want to get through all of the ones that were considered Homoptera first. Next are the Ocanarincas, and I guarantee you've seen one of these. These are your cicadas, your plant hoppers, your spittle bugs, your leaf hoppers, a huge cosmopolitan suborder of insects. Akenarinka literally means neck mouth, and that's because it looks like the beak is coming out of like maybe where you would imagine the neck of the insect to be. So again, this is referencing the position of that mouth part. From here, there are two infra orders, the cicada morpha, which literally just means the form of a cicada. This includes your cicadas, your leaf hoppers, your spittle bugs. In fact, the family name for the leaf hoppers is cicadelidae because it literally just means little cicada. So if it kind of looks like a cicada, it's probably in this infra order. The easiest way to identify these guys is that their antennae pop out really close. It looks like from their eyes, their antennae are coming out from like right next to their eye, as opposed to the other infra order where it looks like the antenna is coming out from below the eye. Now the second infra order are the fulgoromorpha, which is the form of the fulgorids, and the fulgorids are your plant hoppers and lantern flies. The whole group of the fulgoromorpha doesn't have a lot of different differentiation in their common names. We all call them like some sort of plant hopper and a whole bunch of family names that have common names, but I've never actually heard anyone use them because they're small little insects that don't get a lot of attention, but they're quite beautiful. Every now and then a picture goes viral of one with like little fireworks looking like it's coming out of its butt. So anyway, those are the plant hoppers. Okay, now that we have talked about old Hemoptera, now we're going to move into what used to be old Hemiptera. Since Hemiptera was promoted and now includes all of these other insects below it, the name that Hemiptera was once referring to also had to change. So instead of being Hemiptera, now the suborder we have is Heteroptera, which still pays homage to the original Hemiptera name because Heteroptera means different wings. Why? Because this group of insects is actually defined by its wings and not its mouth parts. The Heteroptera have what is called a hemi elytra. And if you watched my beetle video, then you'll know that the elytra on beetles is when the forewing has been hardened to create a shell that protects the hind wings under it. Well, heteroptera have a hemi elytra. So the first wing, their forewing, has been half hardened into a thick leathery thing and then the other half of the forewing is membranous. And that's where we get its name, Heteroptera. Another way to identify them is their mouth parts come off on the front of their head, kind of where you would expect, you know, mouth parts to come from. <laughs> Within the Heteroptera, you have stink bugs, assassin bugs, wheel bugs, squash bugs. So all the things that kind of look like a stink bug. Shield bugs are also in here. It's really interesting and beautiful suborder that has tons of biodiversity in it and really beautiful insects. I hope you enjoyed this meandering journey from talking about the history of old Hemiptera and old Hemoptera to what modern day Hemiptera includes and the little taxonomic tree all the way down. I will see you in the next What's in a Name video. Bye!